Hello everyone. Previous class we discussed about the static stabilization of the glenohumeral joint. We also have covered up with the arthrokinematics and osteokinematics of glenohumeral joint and other three joints. Today we'll discuss about the muscles that are responsible for creating the movement. That is muscle kinetics responsible for movement or muscle force. We also will discuss about the dynamic stabilization of the shoulder complex. So first muscle kinetics that we will discuss is for elevation. So which muscles are responsible for elevation? The elevators are the upper trapezius, levator scapulae and rhomboids. You can see in the picture here, the upper trapezius pulls the scapula upward, levator scapulae which is coming from the first for transverse process of the cervical vertebra and getting inserted to the superior angle of the scapula and also you can see two rhomboids which are pulling the scapula upward and medially so these muscles create elevation of the scapula you can see in this video demonstration how the levator scapula is pulling the scapula upward and also you can see there is a slight anterior tilt of the scapula second video animation you can see trapezius pulling the scapula upward and here you can see uh, the lower trapezius is pulling the scapula downward so the lower trapezius is responsible for depression and upper trapezius is responsible for elevation so what are the depressors of the scapula the depressors of the scapula are the lower trapezius latissimus dorsi and pectoralis minor you can see this lower trapezius which is coming from T2 to T12 spine of the thoracic vertebra and getting inserted to the spine of the scapula. When it contracts, it's going to create a downward force and downward pull of the scapula. Other muscle which creates depression is the latissimus dorsi which is pulling the scapula as well as the humerus downward and internally. So it's coming from the thoracic and lumbar spine as well as from the thoracolumbar fascia it also has a uh, attachment on the inferior angle of the scapula and gets inserted to the floor of the bicipital group or intertubercular sulcus the other muscle which creates depression of the scapula is the pectoralis minor which is coming from the third fourth and fifth rib and it gets inserted to the coracoid process so when this muscle contracts, it's going to pull the coracoid process and the scapula down. That is depression of the scapula. So here you can visualize how the lower trapezius is pulling the scapula downward. And here you can see how the latissimus dorsi is pulling the scapula as well as the humerus downward. Next, moving on to protractors of the scapula. Protractors of scapula are the serratus anterior and pectoralis major. So these muscles are responsible for pushing and pulling or push up plus actions of the muscle. So when this muscle contracts, there will be protraction of the scapula and the force will be transferred across the glenohumeral joint towards the upper limb. This serratus anterior muscle is also called as the buxer's muscle. So you can see here how the serratus anterior contracts to transfer the force from scapula protraction to the upper limb. Next is the retractors of the scapula. The retractors means the scapula is going closer to the spine. Retractors of the scapula are middle trapezius and rhomboids. That is rhomboids major and minor as well as lower trapezius. Uh, the action of all these four muscles will create a line of force which is produced purely towards the retraction movement of the scapula. This is an animation to show you how the rhomboids function as a elevator of the scapula, downward rotator of the scapula and retractors of the scapula. So what are the muscles that produce downward rotation of the scapula? This levator scapulae, rhomboids, pectoralis minor, latissimus dorsi, upper rotators of the scapula are deltoid, trapezius, serratus anterior. 
So during the upward rotation of this scapula, which obviously occurs when the humerus is going for abduction. So we can see the synergic relationship of, of the muscles which create upward rotation. First the deltoid and the supraspinatus muscle contract to create a up, uh, abduction of the glenohumeral joint during which the upper trapezius pulls the clavicle upward creating elevation of the clavicle and the scapula then the middle trapezius pulls the upper part of the scapula medially whereas lower trapezius pulls downward and serratus anterior pulls the scapula anteriorly and laterally so when all these muscles contract simultaneously it create a upper rotation of the scapula along with abduction of the glenohumeral joint now coming to the muscles that has function at the glenohumeral joint what are the flexors of the glenohumeral joint they are anterior deltoid pectoralis major coracobrachialis and long head of biceps uh, abductors of the glenohumeral joint are the deltoids mainly anterior and middle deltoid and supraspinatus you can see here how the supraspinatus muscle is contracting to create a abduction of the glenohumeral joint as well as the deltoid all the three fibers of the deltoid that is anterior middle and posterior contract to create a pure abduction of the glenohumeral joint the adductors and extensors of the glenohumeral joint are deltoid teres major latissimus dorsi triceps long head of triceps and pectoralis major the external rotators are the infraspinatus posterior deltoid and teres minor the internal rotators of the glenohumeral joint are subscapularis anterior deltoid pectoralis major latissimus dorsi and teres major you can notice here that you have strong internal rotators compared to the external rotators so the total muscle mass of the internal rotator is much higher than the external rotators this is important anatomically and biomechanically for using the glenohumeral joint during throwing activities so this strong internal rotator can deaccelerate the external rotator torque and create sudden internal rotation during throwing activity so you can see in this picture first stage of throwing active throwing is wind up and second is cocking phase in this cocking phase you can see there is external rotation of the glenohumeral joint to create the range of throwing and after this external rotation is created there will be acceleration of internal rotation which will be very powerful compared to the external rotation and at the end phase which is a deacceleration phase here the internal rotator muscles will go for inhibition whereas the external rotator muscle will activate so these two external and internal rotators of the glenohumeral joint play their role during throwing activities and we need to remember that internal rotators are much stronger compared to external rotators of the glenohumeral joint